All right, uh, welcome back. Um, this video is for the actual uh, install process. So I'm assuming that you've uh, made your uh, USB key. This is not the one that's plugged into it right now. Uh, just a little visual aid. Um, I'm assuming that you've made your USB key um, and uh, gone into the BIOS, configured your BIOS to boot to the USB key, booted up your computer and got into this prompt. Um, you can optionally uh, have like made your uh, <sighs> disk, set up your disk for full disk encryption. There's a, a video on that. Um, if not, uh, it's totally optional. Um, but yeah, uh, once we get to this prompt, uh, we're going to hit uh, I for install. And uh, <clears throat> it's uh, going to give you a um, L. Uh, it's going to ask you what your uh, default keyboard layout, layout is. So let's type L to get a list just so we can see some of the options. Um, I, you know, you've got like UK keyboards, uh, US keyboards, US with like a bunch of options. Um, <clears throat> the keyboard default keyboard layout that I always use is like US, uh, swap control caps. So that just like swaps your, uh, caps lock and left control key. Um, because I use control all the time and it's, much more convenient uh, to hit the caps lock key instead of control. And then this isn't even a listed option, but it'll work uh, with uh, meta E S C. Um, and <clears throat> that's just gonna make some keyboard shortcuts easier for us. Um, so yeah, if we do that, um, we can, um, yeah, uh, you can just hit like US or UK. Um, OpenBSD doesn't have like great non-English uh, support. So I recommend using either US or UK, right? Um, and then, uh, so it's already got noob entered um, as an option because I kind of started this before, but messed up. Uh, <laughs> so uh, messed up trying to s show something that I knew wouldn't work. Um, so I'm just going to hit enter for noob, um, which address do I want to configure? I know that AS zero, uh, won't work. That was the thing that I, uh, was trying to show, uh, how it doesn't work. Um, so I'm going to use the ethernet connection MSK zero. Uh, if you're not sure, um, when you try, uh, to do, do one of these, if you pick like a Wi-Fi, right? So the AS zero um, is for a Wi-Fi chip that's in this laptop, uh, that OpenBSD, that they don't have firmware support that OpenBSD can use, uh, because it's not, like, uh, open source, I guess. Um, something like that. I'm not entirely sure exactly why, uh, certain Wi-Fi firmware is acceptable or not to OpenBSD. <clears throat> um, but I'm just going to use the Ethernet connection, which is MSK0, um, if you're concerned, um, VLAN is, uh, almost never going to be what you want unless you're doing like a, uh, like a virtual machine install for OpenBSD. Um, so yeah. Um, and if you try the wrong one, uh, especially if it's a Wi-Fi version, um, you can just like you see up here it says that any prompt except password prompts you can escape to a shell by typing exclamation point so if, if it asks starts asking you for like an ssid or like a wpa passphrase um just hit um like you know um uh, exclamation point and hit enter and then type exit and then it'll start the process over and you can go back through and try a different interface. Um, if you've got an ethernet connection, this should go fairly smoothly. Um, also, if you uh, don't have an ethernet connection, but you downloaded the uh, install version, 
um, where you've downloaded all the sets onto the USB drive, you can just hit done and not set up network interface um, at all. So we'll do MSK0 uh, because we didn't do the install version and we're gonna need that uh, network interface. Autoconf will work. And then you can just hit none for IPv6. And then we can say done. And uh, then um, your DNS domain name, uh, if you're not connected to the internet, you can just leave it at the default my.domain. Um, so unless you have like a, a local DNS network that you've set up, um, yeah. Um, which I do, but I'm not gonna go over that for this one. <laughs> and then this is your root password. So this is your like super user password. So make a strong password. Um, I'm not going to do that just cause this is a, a test video. So I'm just gonna type noob and <clears throat> start SSHD by default. Um, I'm gonna say yes. And I recommend that you say yes as well. Um, this gives you the option, essentially, uh, it makes it can make transferring files to and from your OpenBSD machine a lot easier, actually, because uh, you don't have to worry about like file systems um, or any of that stuff. So I'm going to recommend that you do this, uh, especially if you need like uh, Wi-Fi support and you uh, haven't haven't like done that yet. Uh, I would say hit yes. Um, and I just say hit yes all the time, unless you really don't want to be able to log into your computer remotely. Um, the OpenBSD's SSH daemon is very secure. Um, and it's used like everywhere. Like, uh, even like Windows comes with, uh, SSH, like open SSH. OpenBSD's version of SSH on it. Um, and then because we're, you know, gonna be using this as a graphical uh, system, we're gonna wanna say yes. Um, the X window system is the um, graphical user interface. So unless you're setting up a server, uh, hit yes here. And then uh, we do wanna set up a user. Uh, we'll just do noob. And uh, you can type whatever you want for the full username, but I'll just hit enter to have it be noob. And I will make the password noob as well. And uh, I would say no uh, here as well. Don't allow uh, root to log in by SSH. It's, you know, doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, uh, if you wanna do uh, if you're not like, if your machine's not connected to the internet, um, like if it's behind a firewall or a router, like it is in most cases, uh, saying yes would be okay, but I'd say no pretty much every time. Um, <clears throat> and then they're asking which disc is the root disc. Um, so I would always hit question mark here just to be sure. Um, but <clears throat> you can see, so I've set up a crypto device here and that's that SD1. You can see how it says crypto there. Uh, SD0 is the USB drive that I have plugged in. Um, and then WD0 is the like actual like unencrypted disk. So if you want full disk encryption and you've gone through the video on setting that up, um, you can type, you know, whatever the your crypto device is here. Um, otherwise, uh, type in the one that's not your USB drive. Uh, so if you didn't do the full disk encryption, that would be WD0 in this case, but I'm gonna do SD1 uh, because that is uh, the encrypted version. But that's the only difference uh, in the install process after you set up encryption. Um, and we will use the whole disk and we can just use the auto partition layout. So just hit enter for all of these. And then this is gonna go through setting up your cylinder, you know, setting up the file system and all that fun stuff. And then you can hit done. And then let's install the sets. Um, HTTP is fine. Um, we don't have a proxy. Um, and so you can see it tried to connect to uh, the same place that we um, 
you know, we tried to get a list from ftp.openbsd.org, but it didn't work. Um, so what I'm going to say, you know, if that doesn't work, you can do ftp.usa.openbsd.org. Um, if you're not in the USA, um, then I would try maybe FTP, uh, dot open dot org. Let's see if that works. Um, and it says they weren't able to connect using HTTPS, use HTTP instead. Um, so let's hit no. Um, I'll have to, you can look up online, um, what some of the like options are, um, if you're not in the U S, um, or Canada, uh, you can get, uh, get it from ftp.usa.openbsd.org, um, if you're in the U S or Canada. Uh, I think for legal reasons, you're not supposed to uh, get it from here if you're not in the U.S. or Canada. Um, but, I mean, nobody's going to, you know, nobody's really going to gonna rat you out. Um, <laughs> certainly not in OpenBSD. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, it got all the sets for us. And so we'll just install all of them. You're going to want to install all of them. Um for like a graphical user environment setup. So it's gonna pull all those down. And while it's doing that, um, I will look up um, some of the available mirrors um, that you can use. Real quick, if you're not in uh, the U S um, I'm doing, I'm looking this up over tour. So it's a little bit slow, um, on my desktop, which is right next to this laptop. Um, it sure is slow. Um, Yeah, so where are the, yeah, so um, if you go to uh, HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash www.openbsd.org forward slash ftp.html, uh, that will give you a list of HTTPS uh, servers that you can pull these sets down from. And there's a bunch of different servers uh, all over the world. There's like Australia, Austria, Brazil, Bulgaria, Canada, China, Costa Rica, <clears throat> Denmark, France, Germany, uh, Greece, you know, all over the world. Just pick one that's close to you. Uh, and that has HTTPS and, uh, that, that should work. Um, you can almost, you can certainly get it from, uh, Canada. Uh, it looks like there's an HTTPS server at openbsd.cs.toronto.edu. Um, so, you know, just to give you a specific one that you're not going to have legal issues, uh, with, um, getting, you know, the software from, uh, you can use that, uh, openbsd.cs.toronto.edu as your, uh, HTTP server. And if you did the install version of the, uh, USB flashing, then you won't have to worry about this. Um, also, if you do get the, uh, install version, It'll give you a warning like uh, no SHA-256.sig uh, file to verify the sets with. Um, that's okay. Um, don't worry about that. Um, but 
yeah, now you can see it's gotten pulled everything down here and now it's uh, installing everything. Um, this, you know, it's just sort of a waiting game. And once these have been, you know, this will only take a couple more minutes. Uh, this base 70.tgz, um, that's the, the biggest file that has to be installed and downloaded. Uh, like you can see, it took like a minute and 10 seconds uh, to download that one and all the other ones were way less time. So, um, yeah, once you've got, got that one installed, it's only a couple more minutes left uh, on the install. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can do to, uh, you know, fill the time, um, but this doesn't take very long, so I, you know, hesitate to like pause it and then uh, <laughs> like just add, like just concat, just make the video shorter when it's only going to save me a couple minutes and it's of video time and it's not, it's going to add a whole bunch more editing time, whereas I can just upload this directly. Um, let's see. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention when I was doing the, uh, the BIOS uh, settings is that you might, uh, for Windows, you might have to uh, disable secure boot in your BIOS settings. Um, and that's just like recently lots of Windows machines have shipped with uh, like secure boot enabled. Um, and... Uh, like, I wouldn't, wouldn't worry about, like, it's just a Windows thing that doesn't, I don't feel like really adds a lot of security, um, unless you're like leaving your laptop in public spaces a lot and you don't have like full disk encryption on it, um, right? So if you're really concerned about security, do the full disk encryption option. Uh, and like just disable secure boot in your BIOS. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, I don't think this uh, particular laptop ha even has secure boot on it. So that's really, uh, really not a concern. I don't think I could have even shown it to you uh, for this one, but yeah, once you've got secure boot disabled, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, booting to your USB drive as long as you've uh, changed the boot order. Um, yeah, and you can see these extracting Etsy and extracting X Etsy, uh, those are just the default configuration files for uh, the regular base system and for the graphical user environment. And uh, just a couple more sets to go. There's the XServe and there's one more, I think. Maybe not. Oh no, there's got the X base up there at the top. Yeah, so there's four sets total that have to be installed. And that's it, we're done. And then uh, I'm not in Canada, I'm in the US. Um, and Mountain. So that's my time zone. And... Yeah, once this is uh, done relinking to create a unique kernel, um, that's the install process. Um, so this relinking to create a unique kernel is just a security feature. Uh, so like a lot of exploits um, in like, you know, a kernel are going to have, uh, they rely on things being in a particular order and being at particular offsets. Um, so when you relink the kernel, uh, you create, uh, they essentially randomly reorder everything uh, in the kernel so that it's harder for uh, attackers to, you know, transfer an exploit that they find uh, in OpenBSD to uh, OpenBSD installs in general. So uh, if you've got a, a, you know, a faster machine, this won't take as long. Um, <laughs> like I said, this is a pretty old, uh, old machine. So this takes a little bit longer. Uh, 
on a slower processor. Uh, but yeah, I've used like I used this computer as recently uh, as 2019 uh, to do like real work on. Um, this was like the laptop that I actually used with OpenBSD uh, to do real work on. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty lightweight. That's one of the things that I like about OpenBSD is that you can, you can use it, <clears throat> uh, pretty well on everything. So yeah, uh, now we've installed and, uh, if we hit, uh, reboot, it'll boot into the, the new OS and just make sure that you, uh, remove your USB drive before it does that. Otherwise, it'll just boot back into the installer. So it's rebooting. I'll remove the USB drive after, as soon as it says rebooting. And uh, yeah. So because I set up uh, encryption, it won't boot uh, until I enter the passphrase for the disk. So I'll enter the wrong passphrase and you'll see that it gives me an issue. And then if I enter the right passphrase, it brings up the boot prompt. If you don't want to wait the five seconds before it boots the default uh, kernel, you can just hit enter. And yeah, now we're booting into the actual uh, OS, which will become apparent here in just a second. Um, yeah. And you can see it got, you might be able to tell it got a little sharper once it detected the uh, um, display. And you can see that I tried to do this uh, hostname.af0 um, and it was insecure. So it fixed the, fixing the permissions. It won't do that if you like, don't like abort uh, a configuration uh, partway through. This reordering libraries is another security feature. It'll do that on every boot. This, these two things, uh, it only does on your first boot. It's just generating, uh, you know, uh, security keys for your uh, SSH daemon. And uh, that's gonna allow you to securely log in. Um, and <clears throat> it's uh, downloading some firmware. So if you did have a like Wi-Fi chip that would work with firmware, if you install with uh, an Ethernet cord first, um, it'll download that firmware for you here. Um, you can see it's not downloading one for Wi-Fi. It's downloading one for the like webcam and for the Intel display and the Intel CPU. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like... Um, and then it's checking for available binary patches. Um, if you, uh, download, like if you run current, which, um, I recommend honestly doing is running current because then you get updates to like, not, you get updates for the like operating system and your packages, um, so I run current because Tor, like the Tor browser gets updated, you know, fairly frequently. Um, so it's nice to be able to run the most recent version of that. Um, <clears throat> but if you don't do that, it'll just uh, like add the critical uh, patches. And then it's booting into our uh, like login screen. Um, and... <laughs> Yeah, this looks super ugly at first. Like, I think it, I mean, it doesn't look maybe quite as ugly as it does on the screen because of the sort of like pixelation of filming another screen, but it still looks pretty bad. Um, but anyway, I will uh, go over how to make this like look nice instead of, you know, and make it a little more aesthetically pleasing so that you want to spend time on it um, in, you know, uh, a series of other videos, but yeah, um, that is it for this one. Um, we've 
installed OpenBSD. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that was relatively painless and easy. Um, so if you liked this video, um, leave a, hit the like button. Um, if you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. And if you've got any uh, questions, concerns, or criticisms, leave a comment. And if you want to get notified when I upload new videos, uh, hit subscribe. But that's it for this one. Thanks so much. Peace.